I don't like being wrong, but I'm not afraid to admit when I am. And this is a case of me very clearly being wrong. So I enjoy existing on this planet too much to fall on an actual sword, so this video will have to suffice. What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and recently I made a video talking about the UDM Pro SE. I have since deleted that video because it is inaccurate, and I also referred to the original UDM, and we were talking about the switching backplane on it. The switching backplane being one gigabit per second, or one gigabit per second. Now if you don't know, a switch's backplane is essentially how much throughput can it have, how much traffic can it route between the ports. It is not the uplink between the switch and the router. Now for most switches, you'll probably be doing your uplink between your switch and your router at one gig over RJ45 or one or 10 gig over SFP or SFP plus respectively. We're starting to see some two and a half gig switches come out, but those aren't common enough for me to even care about talking about them yet. Now again, the switch's backplane is how much traffic can a switch route between all of its ports, not how much it can actually push out to your router. However, when talking about the UDM Pro, that term seems to be used a lot for talking about the switch's uplink to the router. Because the UDM Pro, and the UDM for that matter, are in a bit of an odd category. I can't think of a device that's as popular as the UDM Pro that has a built-in router and switch kind of merged together, as well as you know a few other things here and there. But so when talking about the UDM Pro, the term backplane gets misused. And I too am guilty of that. Now I made a video talking about how the backplane of the UDM Pro is one gigabit per second. And in that video, I'm not referring to the switches uplink to the router. I'm referring to the switches backplane between how much traffic can those eight gigabit ports do between each other. Now I did test this for myself after reading hundreds of comments on the internet saying that, hey, the UDM Pro only has a one gig switching backplane. And so I tried to do my own test and my tests confirmed what I believed, that it was only a one gig backplane, meaning if you were to saturate all of those ports, you'd be maxed out at about 15 or 17 meg per port. But that is incorrect. My testing methodology was flawed. My original testing methodology was a server that had two link aggregated ports to the UDM Pro. I then had two client PCs plugged into the switch ports on the UDM Pro and I ran an iPerf test. And the iPerf test showed 50 meg per client accessing that server. Now I haven't changed any of my UDM Pro switching settings since I made my complete Unify setup guide back in December of 2020. So I was able to see where my testing methodology was flawed. My link aggregation between my server PC and the UDM Pro was not set up correctly and therefore was not working. So I only had a one gigabit connection between the switch and my PC. Now after finding that issue and a number of comments on that video saying, hey, by the way, you're wrong. <laughs> I decided to go back and do another test because, well, if I'm saying misinformation, I'm not doing my job right. Now my testing methodology this time was not flawed. I had two server PCs and two client PCs connected to the UDM Pro switch ports and running iPerf, I was wrong. We got full gigabit on both of those client PCs to their respective servers. I wanted to make this video to let you guys know that, hey, I was wrong and that the UDM Pro does support full gigabit switching on all of the ports on its internal switch, but it still only has a one gigabit per second connection from the switch to the router built into the UDM, although on newer revisions of the UDM Pro that has been upgraded to two and a half gigabit. So if you're plugging in a bunch of access points or a few computers here and there, don't be afraid to use the built-in switch of the UDM Pro. So I wanna give a big thank you to Todd Fennell for calling me out and saying, hey, by the way, you're wrong, and actually taking the time to post his test results which ended up leading me to retest and come to the conclusion that, hey, he's right, I am wrong. So thank you very much. I still have my other reservations about recommending the UDM Pro, such as Ubiquiti's requirement for single sign-on at the time of setup, as well as an active internet connection at the time of setup. I don't like that, but that's besides the point. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, there's a like button, the dislike. This, you can do things, uh, I don't really care. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.